Good morning. Here in Trinity Church and those worshiping with us on the internet and we with them. We have some uh, visitors today in our Andaba partners and Trinity is partners with St. Mary's uh, Monhegan Lake and All Souls Harlem. And I think they're dispersed throughout. If, would you all mind standing just for a moment so we can see you and welcome you from our Andaba groups? I think some are in the aisle, actually. They're gonna raise their hands. Uh, and over here, good, to be spread out. Uh, the other thing we do at the beginning of the service is ask those, if comfortable, uh, who are visiting either for the second or third time to Trinity, uh, or, or the first time, uh, if comfortable, to stand so we can spot you and talk with you in the aisle on the way out and catch you at, uh, at uh, coffee hour. So if you're visiting uh, New York or Trinity Church today, please stand for a minute. We welcome you all. Now, if you take a moment to greet one another here in the church as we prepare. And now, standing to the entrance right.
Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And blessed be God's kingdom, now and forever. Amen. There is one body and one spirit. There is one hope in God's call to us. One Lord, one faith, one baptism. One God and Father of all. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. Father in heaven, who at the baptism of Jesus in the river Jordan proclaimed him your beloved son and anointed him with the Holy Spirit, grant that all who are baptized into his name may keep the covenant they have made and boldly confess him as Lord and Savior, who with you and the Holy Spirit lives and reigns, one God, in glory everlasting. Amen. Amen. A reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. Here is my servant, whom I uphold, my chosen, in whom my soul delights. I have put my spirit upon him. He will bring forth justice to the nations. He will not cry or lift up his voice or make it heard in the street. A bruised reed he will not break, and a dimly burning wick he will not quench. He will faithfully bring forth justice. He will not grow faint or be crushed until he has established justice in the earth and the coastlands wait for his teaching. Thus says God, the Lord, who created the heavens and stretched them out, who spread out the earth and what comes from it, who gives breath to the people upon it and spirit to those who walk in it. I am the Lord. I have called you in righteousness. I have taken you by the hand and kept you. I have given you as a covenant to the people, a light to the nations, to open the eyes that are blind, to bring out the prisoners from the dungeon and from the prison those who sit in darkness. I am the Lord. That is my name. My glory I give to no other nor my praise to idols. See, the former things have come to pass, and new things I now declare. Before they spring forth, I tell you of them. The word of the Lord.
A reading from the book of the Acts of the Apostles. Peter began to speak to the people. I truly understand that God shows no partiality, but in every nation, anyone who fears him and does what is right is acceptable to him. You know the message he sent to the people of Israel, preaching peace by Jesus Christ. He is Lord of all. That message spread throughout Judea, beginning in Galilee after the baptism that John announced, how God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Spirit and with power how he went about doing good and healing all who were oppressed by the devil. For God was with him. We are witnesses to all that he did, both in Judea and in Jerusalem. They put him to death by hanging him on a tree. But God raised him on the third day and allowed him to appear not to all the people, but to us who were chosen by God as witnesses and who ate and drank with him after he rose from the dead. He commanded us to preach to the people and to testify that he is the one ordained by God as judge of the living and the dead. All the prophets testify about him, that everyone who believes in him receives forgiveness of sins through his name. The word of the Lord.
Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Matthew. Jesus came from Galilee to John at the Jordan to be baptized by him. John would have prevented him, saying, I need to be baptized by you, and do you come to me? But Jesus answered him, Let it be so now, for it is proper for us in this way to fulfill all righteousness. Then he consented. And when Jesus had been baptized, just as he came up from the water, Suddenly the heavens were opened to him, and he saw the Spirit of God descending like a dove and alighting on him. And a voice from heaven said, This is my Son, the Beloved, with whom I am well pleased. The Gospel of the Lord. name of God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. There are a lot of Greek words in our tradition, and most of them are indeed that (laughs) to me, Greek. But I know a few. And epiphany is one, this wonderful season we're in. And it means to show forth, to show forth. Episcopalians aren't particularly well known for TV evangelism and street evangelism, and to a degree I say, thank goodness, I guess, (laughs) don't we all? But maybe we're a bit shy about it and could ratchet it up just a little bit so that somebody might know in a graceful way that we believe in the Lord Jesus Christ. Remember in uh, grammar school, those who are my age, we went to grammar school rather than elementary school, and we had what was called show and tell. How many remember, anybody remember that, show and tell? You brought stuff in? It wasn't show off and tell. So when we evangelize or tell a story, it's not about showing off. It's about trying to gracefully show up and describe something that somebody else would catch a hold of. Epiphany, show and tell. Come and see, and gracefully, carefully, not shoving it down anybody's throats, go and tell. Today we celebrate and acknowledge the baptism of Jesus, but also of uh, Hannah and Samuel and Ella and Eileen and Sophia. We've set something off with a candle. Let me just pause to see if we need to respond because we need to hear it and be sure. If the security could be sure to alert me if we need to do anything immediately, okay. What? We do take the warning seriously, so we'll just wait and find out. What was your phrase, Anne? Oh my goodness. (laughs) So, (laughs) he's back. (laughs) I I think we're okay, but we do need to be sure. 
So baptism of the five children, baptism of Jesus, uh, remembering, celebrating, acknowledging. The clergy get together from time to time and during the month and talk about the lessons that are coming up, and we discussed this one, and lingered over why was Jesus baptized? Why was Jesus baptized? Well, I thought about it and wondered about it, and you know, why did he need to be baptized? Well, maybe he was setting a precedent you know, sort of follow the leader approach so that we would think about doing it. If he did it, we could do it. Uh, affirming John the Baptist in the tradition of being baptized for the remission of sins, which gets to the second piece. If Jesus is sinless without sin, why would he be baptized? Well, Anne helped with an analogy in our little clergy uh, group, and just in case you don't like the analogy, her email is amalony at, tr <laughs> at trinitywallstreet.org. <laughs> and it, she said it was maybe to protect him from, as he would be taking on the sins of the world, and she used the word Teflon, that it would sort of let this stuff that's going to come his way, and boy, it came his way, not get in. Well, maybe that has something to do with it. But the piece that I'm absolutely certain of is Jesus' baptism marked the beginning of his public ministry. Because from that moment, he, uh, after he heard those wonderful uh, word, words in his heart, uh, this is my beloved with whom I am well pleased, he went to the desert and wrestled with the types of ministry he might have and then lived into them. And so these children begin their ministry today. One's six, the other is babies, our babies. Grammar school didn't go too well for me, apparently. <laughs> so, but they will begin their ministry, and it might simply begin with a ministry of being loved, being the object of, of love. That's an activity. And they will, too, grow into the full stature of Christ at some point. So the beginning of ministry. We talk about, in our tradition, throughout the centuries, three ways to live out ministry. And they're all by faith. Faith inspiration, things that inspire us and draw us closer to God and one another and get our hearts uh, afire. Faith inspiration. The second is faith formation or education, where we wrestle with the uh, ideas of this faith we have ins been inspired by and then plan and formulate action in the world, faith in action. Faith inspiration, faith formation, planning, structuring, study, and then faith in action. We do it individually and we do it collectively as a parish, as a church. And some of us may spend a little more time in one of those pieces of the trilogy than others. But we all need a little piece of it. To grow into the full stature of, of Christ, the discipline has, of the church has said to be a communicant in good standing, a member in good standing, we are called to do two th three things. Always three, I guess. Called to do three things, to work, pray, and give for the spread of the kingdom. As we move into maturity and becoming Christ-like in full stature, we would do those three things, and they sort of line up with those other three, inspiration, formation, and action. The church has chosen to sort of take its temperature by counting some of those. They've traditionally counted two of the three. Inspiration, how many people come to church on Sunday? It's actually in the bulletin. You know, is that a count? Is something happening? Is there anything measurable? And the other traditional way is uh, uh, giving units or members. How many people come? How many people have a recorded gift? Kind of tells you a little bit about the vitality of the church. But the third one, uh, work, uh, how wonderfully one of our staff, who's now the rector at uh, Heavenly Rest, 
began having us count volunteers. So how many come to church? How many give? How many show up to do brown bag and work on the habitat? That's the third element of vitality. So as particularly parents and godparents, help these children to grow into the full stature of Christ by praying with them and teaching them to pray, working with them and helping them to work, and help them become giving people. Not showing it off, but doing it enough that somebody might notice. <laughs> Don't hide your light under a bushel. Just give to others in a way that is quiet and graceful, but might be noticed. Giving is not showing off. Giving's writing the check or grabbing the dollar or the quarter and letting it go. Just letting it go. You know, when we work, we get something for it. We're supposed to, hopefully. When you work, you get something for it. Praise or salary. But when you give, you don't count the cost and you just let it go. So for these young people, and for us, to be those who pray and work with inspiration, those who work and, and study and struggle, and those who are giving to God and one another. There are a few phrases that I bet you have in your life that you hold on to in your heart, and they can change your life forever. One phrase that I've had probably only since I was seven or eight years old, although my godparents used it from October 30th, 1944, on every celebration of my baptism for all of those years till all three of them died, they, they called me or sent a card to me, and on it they said this. James, they always use the baptismal name, James, you are marked as Christ's own forever. Never forgotten. We will do that today for these five. Those of you who are baptized have been marked by Christ's own forever. I bet Jesus held it in his heart when in his heart and those around him heard those words, this is my beloved son with whom I am well pleased. I bet that was the armor, the Teflon, whatever it took to keep all the snares of the enemy and the hurts of the world and the pain of the nails. And the celebrations along the Sea of Galilee, catching hundreds and hundreds of fish and big picnics and baskets of food for everyone. This is my beloved son with whom I am well pleased. You are marked as Christ's own forever. Now, on the very practical level, sponsors and, and uh, godparents, uh, I'm sure they cleared with you that you pay for all the college education. They went, went over that with you, I'm sure, ahead of time. But here are some things to watch as these children grow into the full stature of Christ. And a man named John Westerhoff set these faith principles out based upon the uh, development principles of Piaget. He says they will first experience faith, faith experienced, love, warmth, color, mobiles, that kind of thing. You experience it. The second is belonging faith. And I can remember for me, it was in, I don't know, kindergarten or something, where I came into the Sunday school room and there was a hook that I put my coat on and with the, the coat that had the mittens with the strings attached through the, through the arms and went on to the coat. That was my coat hook. I belonged there. I like it when you sit in the same shoes in the same place. And you develop little communities and pockets of, within the whole. So you belong when you do brown bag. You belong when you're with a group doing a habitat house. You belong when you're on a mission and service group. You belong when you're an acolyte or playing the trumpets or in the choir or ushering or saying hello to someone on the street. Help these children 
grow up to experience love and to give it, to have a sense of belonging and a sense of inviting into being part of a community. Those are the first two. The third one is shocking that Westerhoff put forward, and it's, he calls it critical doubt, faith, challenging, wondering, even shaking your fist at God and saying, why? Or I don't understand, or I'm disappointed in you. That sort of time of prodigal period, Westerhoff calls faith because he angers at God, and God can stand it. The bewilderment is about God not being clear to us at a moment, and God can stand that and do that. So that's the tough time, parents and grandparents, both spiritually and in all aspects of life, when the kids begin to wrestle with all that there is in life, taking on some and rejecting other. Discerning time, critical time, wondering time, under 30 time, all those types of things. And the only people who can help anyone move th through and enjoy that period are those who get to the fourth, owned faith, where we're no longer bargaining, saying, if grandma lives, I'll believe. No more bargaining, just saying, I'm marked as Christ's own forever, and I belong. So parents and godparents, remind the children of this day. What is it? January 12th? I was baptized October 30th. How many know the, their baptismal dates? Anybody? May, rarely do people. Okay. Uh, great. For the others, pick one. <laughs> Any day. Let it be this one. If I didn't know October 30th, I would now take July 25th. It's St. James. My brother John and I, our parents named after those brothers, sons of Zebedee, and boy, that was true, sons of thunder. Pick a day. Remember it. Link. Being born. How many know your birthday? Almost everybody, except the little children. They'll come to know it because it's celebrated with them. Have a baptismal day. That which by nature you cannot have, but is a gift of the Holy Spirit right here in this place. Link together life and faith. And a faith-filled life is abundant and purposeful. That's why Jesus was baptized. That's why we're baptized. And live forever with the sure and certain knowledge that not branded like with a fire iron and the cattle, but with water marked as Christ's own forever. Help these children look in the mirror and say, I was there when it went on your forehead. God loves you this day and forever. Amen. We now invite the children, their parents, and godparents who will be baptized to come forward. And I'd like to invite all the children in the church, if they wish, and all the children at heart, if they wish, to come forward and gather in the center aisle. So it's probably easier coming up the center aisle for the children or whoever else wants to have a good view. Sponsors and parents, present your child to receive the sacrament of holy baptism. I present Eileen to receive the sacrament of baptism. Eileen Myers Aldis. Eileen Fuli Myers Aldis to receive the sacrament of baptism. 
Eileen, do you desire to be baptized? Yes. All right. Okay, that sounds. <laughs> I present, I present Sophia, Sophia Vanessa, Vanessa Trent to receive the sacrament of baptism. I present Hannah Jane Daly to receive the sacrament of baptism. I present Samuel Benjamin Husband to receive the sacrament of baptism. I present Ella Kathleen Johnson to receive the sacrament of baptism. Perfect. I think I just want to invite the husband family to come up more. Yes. Get there you are. Perfect. Wonderful. Will you be responsible for seeing that the child you present is brought up in the Christian faith and life? I will with God's help. Will you by your prayers and witness help this child to grow into the full stature of Christ? I will with God's help. Do you renounce Satan? and all the spiritual forces of wickedness that rebel against God. I renounce them. Do you renounce the evil powers of this world, which corrupt and destroy the creatures of God? I renounce them. Do you renounce all sinful desires that draw you from the love of God? I renounce them. Do you turn to Jesus Christ and accept him as your Savior? Do you put your whole trust in his grace and love? I do. Do you promise to follow and obey him as your Lord? I do. I now ask all of you who witnessed these vows to stand. Will you do all in your power to support these persons in their life in Christ? Let us now join with those who are committing themselves to Christ and renew our own baptismal covenant. Do you believe in God the Father? Do you believe in Jesus Christ, the Son of God? Do you believe in God, the Holy Spirit? Will you continue in the apostles' teaching and fellowship, in the breaking of bread and in the prayers? Will you persevere in resisting evil? And whenever you fall into sin, repent and return to the Lord. Will you proclaim by word and example the good news of God in Christ? Will you seek and serve Christ in all persons, loving your neighbor as yourself? Will you strive for justice? and peace among all people, and respect the dignity of every human being? Let us now pray for these persons who are to receive the sacrament of new birth and for all those in need of prayer today. Deliver them, O Lord, from the way of sin and death. Open their hearts to your grace and truth. Fill them with your holy and life-giving spirit. Keep them in the faith and communion of your holy church. Teach them to love others in the power of the spirit. Send them into the world in witness to your love. Bring them to the fullness of your peace and glory. Lord, 
Be with those who are persecuted, sick, unemployed, or in any special need. Grant a place in your kingdom to those who have died in the communion of your church and to those whose faith is known to you alone. Grant to the Lord that all who are baptized into the death of Jesus Christ, your Son, may live in the power of his resurrection and look for him to come again in glory, who lives and reigns now and forever. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. We thank you, Almighty God, for the gift of water. Over it, the Holy Spirit moved in the beginning of creation. Through it, you led the children of Israel out of their bondage in Egypt into the land of promise. In it, your son, Jesus, received the baptism of John and was anointed by the Holy Spirit as the Messiah, the Christ, to lead us through his death and resurrection from the bondage of sin into everlasting life. We thank you, Father, for the water of baptism. In it, we are buried with Christ in his death. By it, we share in his resurrection. Through it, we are reborn by the Holy Spirit. Therefore, in joyful obedience to your Son, we bring into his fellowship those who come to him in faith, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Now sanctify this water, we pray you, by the power of your Holy Spirit, that those who are here cleansed from sin and born again may continue forever in the risen life of Jesus Christ, our Savior. To him, to you, and to the Holy Spirit, be all honor and glory, now and forever. Amen. Amen. You may be seated. begin with Eileen. Proclaim your name. Eileen. Eileen. Eileen of God. I baptize you in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Sealed by the Holy Spirit in baptism and marked as Christ's own forever. Amen. Name this child. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> Hannah of God, I baptize you in the name of the Father and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Hannah, you are sealed by the Holy Spirit in baptism and marked as Christ's own forever. Amen. And I did the oil, not the water. <laughs> Name this child. Sophia of God. I baptize in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Sophia, you are sealed by the Holy Spirit in baptism and marked as Christ's own forever. Amen. <laughs> Name this child. Samuel. <laughs> Samuel of God, I baptize you in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. 
Amen. Samuel, you are sealed by the Holy Spirit in baptism and marked as Christ's own forever. Amen. Name this child. Ella. <laughs> Ella of God. I baptize you in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Ella, you are sealed by the Holy Spirit in baptism and marked as Christ's own forever. Amen. Please stand. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you that by water and the Holy Spirit, you have bestowed upon these, your servants, the forgiveness of sin and have raised them to the new life of grace. Sustain them, O Lord, in your Holy Spirit. Give them an inquiring and discerning heart, the courage to will and to persevere, a spirit to know and to love you, and the gift of joy and wonder in all your works. Amen. Amen. Please turn to page four of your bulletin and welcome now these new members of the body of Christ and his community. We receive you into the household of God, confess the faith of Christ crucified, proclaim his resurrection, and share with us in his eternal priesthood. And let us give them a warm Trinity welcome as we welcome them into the of the Lord be always with you. Please look over at the connections for a variety of ministries and opportunities at Trinity and St. Paul's. I uh, want to thank Elaine Pagels uh, for being with us this morning, Our author, theologian, professor, nice person, so uh, th uh, Princeton professor, thank you, uh, as the prophecy that provokes uh, theme continues. Uh, next week, week Mary uh, Chilton Calloway. Next Sunday is also the commemoration of Martin Luther King. Uh, Father Basuti Jones will be preaching at 9 and 11.15. This evening here at Trinity at 5 p.m., a presentation called Angel's Bone on human, human trafficking, and then that's followed by a discussion period. Our diocesan Indaba conversations are taking place, and Anne will tell you a bit about them. Thank you. Good morning. It is a joy to be partnered with two other parishes in the diocese as part of the Diocesan Indaba program. This is intended to be able to help have conversations about parish life among parishes that differ very much in the diocese. And we are thrilled to be part of one of those teams. And today we are hosting our representatives of those two parishes. So if you will please, if you are here from St. Mary's Mohegan Lake 
and All Saints Harlem. Would you please stand, all of you who have attended this service? We want to welcome you. Thank you. They will be able to go to coffee hour for a little bit, so please greet them. And thank you, everyone in the congregation who came yesterday to a day of presentation about congregational ministries. It was wonderful to have such participation. And I also wanted to note that Daniel Simons, Father Daniel Simons, is supplying today at St. Mary's Mohegan Lake, which allowed that entire team to be here today. So welcome, everyone. We want to give great thanks for the harp and the brass and the choir and the organ. What a joyful service this morning. God bless. <laughs> Let your light so shine before others that they may see your good works and glorify your Father who is in heaven.
For Eucharist is offered in thanksgiving to God for Hannah, Samuel, Ella, Eileen, and Sophia, the newly baptized. May they show and tell of the goodness of the Lord. And may we also, who have witnessed this baptism, live our lives in such a way that we may show and tell of God's presence. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and a good and joyful thing, always and everywhere, to give thanks to you, loving God, creator of heaven and earth. Because in the mystery of the Word made flesh, you have caused a new light to shine in our hearts, to give the knowledge of your glory in the face of your Son, Jesus Christ, O Lord. Therefore, we praise you joining our voices with angels and archangels and the whole company of heaven who forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name. thanks to you, O God, for the goodness and love which you have made known to us in creation, in the calling of Israel to be your people, in your word spoken through the prophets, and above all, in the word made flesh, Jesus, your Son. For in these last days you sent him to be incarnate from the Virgin Mary, to be the Savior and Redeemer of the world. In him you have delivered us from evil and made us worthy to stand before you. In him, you've brought us out of error into truth, out of sin into righteousness, out of death into life. On the night before he died for us, O Lord Jesus Christ took bread, and when he had given thanks to you, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat. This is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup of wine. And when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is the cup of my blood, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this in remembrance of me. Therefore, according to his command, O Father, we remember his death, we proclaim his resurrection, we await his coming in glory, and we offer our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving to you, O Lord of all, presenting to you from your creation this bread and this wine. We pray you, gracious God, to send your Holy Spirit upon these gifts, that they may be the sacrament of the body of Christ and his blood of the new covenant. Unite us to your Son in his sacrifice, that we may be acceptable through him, being sanctified by the Holy Spirit. In the fullness of time, put all things in subjection unto your Christ, and bring us to that heavenly country where with the Blessed Virgin Mary, St. Paul, and all your saints, we may enter the everlasting heritage of your sons and daughters through Jesus Christ, O Lord. 
the firstborn of all creation, the head of the church, and the author of our salvation. By him and with him and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory is yours, almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. As our Savior Christ has taught us, we now pray. gifts of God for the people of God. Take them in remembrance that Christ died for you and feed them in your hearts by faith with thanksgiving.
Let us pray. Eternal God, Heavenly Father, you have graciously accepted us as living members of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ. And you have fed us with spiritual food and the sacrament of his body and blood. Send us now into the world in peace and grant us strength and courage to love and serve you with gladness and singleness of heart through Christ our Lord. Please turn to page 7 as we send forth our Eucharistic ministers. Sister Premis and John, in the name of this congregation, I send you forth bearing these holy gifts that Janet Levine and Joyce DeJourner, to whom you go, may share with us in the communion of Christ's body and blood. Life is short, and we do not always have time to gladden the hearts of those we meet. So be swift to love, make haste to be kind, and may Christ the Son of God be manifest in you, that your lives may be a light to the world, and the blessings of Almighty God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, come upon you and those you love, this day and forever. Amen. Let us go in peace, showing God's glory and telling the world of his eternal love. Amen.
Hello, I'm Jim Cooper, the 17th rector of Trinity Church and St. Paul's Chapel. I join the vestry and congregational council and people of Trinity Church in thanking you for being with us on the internet. If you live in the New York vicinity, we hope that you will worship with us on some future occasion. If you live elsewhere in the country or somewhere else in the world, we hope that you will use these web pages to find an access to an Episcopal church or Anglican church somewhere near you. God bless.